protecting our freedoms, part two. Kamala Prasad Bisesa, the most disgraceful prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago, has taken away the rights and freedoms as enshrined in our nation's republican constitution. We must therefore take all necessary steps in order to protect the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Now they have embarked upon a mission to systematically go after any individual who is criticizing their regime. They're attacking citizens Facebook and Twitter for criticizing their regime. We must defend our civil liberties and send a clear message to this dictatorship that you will fail. I will not stand idly by and watch as my fellow countrymen, women, are subjected to the worst types of human rights violations and a government exercising extreme military power against innocent civilians beginning to resemble the early stages of the autocratic Syrian and Iranian government's actions. Forget provisions of race, class, creed and political affiliation. The time has come for the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to band together to defeat this evil that has swapped our beloved nation. We must stand up and defend our future, our freedoms, our constitution and our nation's democracy. Where there is a will, there is a way, folks. And we are determined to protect you and your freedoms, our freedoms. No pick-up side government can come into office and one day decide to erode all of our freedoms under the guise of trying to implement peace and security, yet imprisoning the entire country. I warn you not to pay attention to the propaganda campaign that this tyrannical regime is pushing. They're simply trying to legitimize their brutal, heavy-handed and fascist approach by suppressing the masses so that they can pursue their elitist agenda behind closed doors. While the rest of us must be forced to accept that our rights and freedoms are trampled upon and suspended indefinitely. US President Thomas Jefferson once said, those who desire to give up freedom in order to gain security will not have, nor do they deserve, either one. The government is using fear in order to control the masses. And the fear that you could lose your life, be locked up at any point in time, elicits a coordinated conditioning of the population, making them almost mindlessly dependent towards those who claim they can protect them such as the government and the protective services. The government feels now that they can use the people's fear to their advantage, where they can pursue particular agendas quite easily, when things are not functioning properly and they are not held to account, as the country is militarized and in a state of emergency. Stand firm and resolute. We shall not submit to their whims and fancies. I understand it is difficult to be imprisoned in your homes, but Trinidad and Tobago, you shall overcome with the guidance of God. After May 24, 2010, we began to see the systematic takeover of the state by the organized criminal elite, influencing government action, from the dismantling of the intelligence gathering capabilities of the state, to the cancellation of the Coast Guard, OPVs and training the severe attacks on the freedom of the press, as well as the removal of specialized and highly qualified and experienced personnel, replaced by individuals with fraudulent academic profiles, right up to senior government ministers such as Suruj. We even had a hand-picked drug dealer the PM put on a state board. Big fish, you say, Mr. A.G.? You tell me something is right with that. The Attorney General, can say what he wants, and he can threaten the nation's Facebookers and Twitter users. But the time has come, once and for all, for the people of TNT to say, enough is enough. 
all this intelligence and the only people you're arresting is people from impoverished areas such as Nelson Street and Sea Lots. And that is Big Fish? Come better than that, Mr. E.G. You're sounding like a complete and utter fool. Question is, when don't you sound like one? There are particular parts of this country not under curfew where the so-called Big Fish could still be operating big time while everyone is locked away in their homes. After all, it seems the criminal elite have quite a tight grip on this corrupt and vindictive regime. Mr. Big White Collar Organized Criminal is not being targeted by this government. Let's make that abundantly clear. Is not being targeted by this government. It's clear Kamala has no confidence in her national security advisors and she feels she can operate and run the country solo and under the influence of being severely inebriated. Her ministers are endlessly motor-mouthing, contradicting every, everything she says. It's as if the government doesn't know their own backside from their elbow. You can't get a solid position even if you wished for it. Big Fish? Got to be kidding me, right? The government is pathetic. One further question that puzzles us. Tell us, Mr. Ramloga, why did you need to impose a state of emergency to round up gang leaders when the legislation passed months ago was already the law? Why? What is your government's real modus operandi? Absolutely unacceptable governance. As a Christian, all I have to say is God is in favor of the people. So very soon, the, vo the walls of Jericho will come tumbling.